This is going to be a nutrition lecture series that I've given over the past several years. Uh, it's going to cons consist of, a, of 10 parts and there's going to be a final summary. We're going to start off with fats. Uh, there are three types of, of fats. There's a saturated fat, which has no double bonds. This is just a simple carbon to carbon chain. Uh, this consists of animal fats, tropical oils such as palm kernel oil, con coconut oil, palm oil. Then there's the monounsaturated fats uh, from nuts, avocados, olive oil, canola oil. Uh, and then finally, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, which have more than one cis double bond, cis meaning on the same side, versus uh, a trans configuration where there's a hydrogen on opposite side of the chain, which we'll get into later. Uh, the most common, again, are the omega-3 and omega-6. Uh, omega-6 oils are primarily your common vegetable oils, cottonseed oil, corn oil, safflower oils, sunflower, soybean, uh, and also in poultry and eggs. I'm going to list on the screen the 10 worst omega-6 oils. Um, the worst is uh, safflower and then grape, grapeseed oil, poppy seed, etc. Uh, next is the omega-3. Again, this is a, uh, a, a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Uh, omega-3, also known as alpha-linolenic acid, ALA. Uh, the omega-6 was actually uh, linoleic acid. Uh, omega-3 consists of you know, dark leafy green vegetables, walnuts, chia seeds, hemp hearts, flax seeds. Uh, uh, the next we're going to actually get into a trans fats. Uh, trans fats are, are usually man-made. They're liquid cis unsaturated fats such as vegetable oils are hydrogenated to produce saturated fats or are partially hydrogenated which converts some of the cis double bonds into trans double bonds by an isomerization reaction or a catalyst which yields a trans fat which has increased shelf life. And there's actually no safe limit of intake for these type of fats. Partial hydrogenation reconfigures most of the double bonds that do not become chemically saturated, twisting them so that the hydrogen atoms end up on, the, on different sides of the chain, as mentioned earlier. This type of configuration is called trans from the Latin meaning across. The trans configuration is the lower energy form and is favored when catalytically equilibrated as a side reaction in hydrogenation. Next we're going to look at making of a heart attack. We start with a healthy heart and then we start examining all the factors that can cause injuries such as high homocysteine levels, TMAO, endotoxins, inflammation. Next we're going to look at the two most common causes of inflammation, an elevated omega-6 omega-3 ratio and oxidized cholesterol. Oxidized cholesterol, which, which is really due to a low antioxidant load, promotes endothelial injury. Uh, LDL is engulfed by monocytes, which transmigrate through the vessel wall between damaged endothelial cells. LDL is dangerous because it can penetrate the endothelial wall and contribute to the creation of foam cells, which form the core of a plaque deposit. Oxidized LDL cholesterol, LDL that has been exposed to free radicals within the, within the endothelium, also triggers an inflammatory process that accelerates vascular disease. When you're looking at the chain of events that lead to sudden death, MI or stroke, you're starting with an atherosclerotic plaque stage, which can become unstable from new plaque plus foam cells, which release metallo or matrix degrading metalloproteinases, reactive oxygen species, which destabilize recent plaque deposition which can then burst, which then again leads to sudden death MI stroke. The LDL particle is too large to penetrate the tightly closed junctions between adjacent endothelial cells. However, endothelial cells have receptors for both LDL and modified forms of LDL. Transport can occur across an intact endothelium either by receptor-mediated uptake of lipoproteins or by nonspecific uptake into micropenocytic channels. Alternatively, lipid may be engulfed by monocytes in the blood and then transported into the vascular wall inside these cells as they transmigrate into the wall between dysfunctional endothelial cells. Oxidized low-density lipoproteins promote endothelial injury. Low-density lipoproteins carry lipids into the intima. Macrophages adhere to activated endothelial cells and transmigrate into the intima, bringing in lipids. Some of these macrophage foam cells undergo necrosis and release lipids. Next, we're going to discuss the types of connective tissue, glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans, which are synthesized by the smooth muscle cells in the intima, 
which also render these sites prone to lipid accumulation due to capacity of these macromolecules to trap lipids in the intima. Next we're going to look at C-reactive protein and inflammation biomarkers. Elevated concentrations of C-reactive protein, CRP, which is an acute phase reactant produced mainly by hepatocytes, is a marker for systemic inflammation and has been linked to an increased risk of myocardial infarction and ischemic stroke. Next we're going to discuss the omega-6, omega-3 ratio and inflammation. Normally there's a preference for key enzymes to convert omega-3 alpha-linolenic acid over the omega-6 linoleic acid. So the omega-3 alpha-linolenic acid combines with delta-6 desaturase plus an elongase plus delta-5 desaturase which is kind of a rate limiting enzyme which yields EPA plus an elongase plus delta-4 desaturase which yields DHA. Note that, that there is a low conversion efficiency of alpha-linolenic acid from common omega-3 sources, green leafy vegetables, fleet chia seeds, flax seeds, etc., to EPA DHA. So you should consider an additional source of fully formed EPA DHA from an algae-based supplement, 250 to 500 milligrams a day. Uh, EPA blocks omega-6 delta-5 desaturase downstream conversion, which is, is an anti-inflammatory effect. A fatty acid desaturase is an enzyme that removes two hydrogen atoms from a fatty acid, creating a carbon-carbon double bond. Delta-6 desaturase is impaired by aging, alcohol, and nutrient deficiencies, trans fats, and elevated cholesterol. As the omega-6, omega-3 ratio climbs above 5 or greater, delta-5 desaturase is tied up by excess omega-6. The omega-6 linoleic acid plus delta-6 desaturase plus an elongase uh, plus a delta-5 desaturase yields a racodonic acid, which... Uh, this is, again, the substrate for, for cyclooxygenase, 5-lipoxygenase. There's an increased risk of heart disease and cancer. Uh, if we look at the normal inflammatory pathway, there's usually, let's say, a stimulus, an injury of some kind. There's phospholipids in the cell membrane. It's acted upon by phospholipase A2, which is inhibited by corticosteroids, uh, which is then converted to arachidonic acid again, which is acted upon by 5-lipoxygenase to form leukotrienes, cyclooxygenase, to pro which forms prostaglandins. Uh, and remember that meat also contains arachidonic acid, which also leads to increased inflammation.